Thank you. We have um, three versions of our blueprint. So. There's just okay. a, there's a yeah. tiny typo. It's the lowercase yeah. M. It's okay. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, cool. We can deal with that. Okay, so. <clears throat> So this is our global challenge, and our goal was to ensure affordable, reliable, clean, and modern energy for all. Our target country was India, and it's currently in an energy crisis, and this presentation is brought to you by Daniel Baumgartner. Elisa Bishek. Asta Rossi. Prithvi Rivuri. There are several reasons for why we chose India to be our target country. Firstly, it has a diverse geography and thus it has uh, options, it has multiple different types of renewable energy available to it. Since its geography ranges from mountainous to plains, different types can be established. Also, uh, it has a monsoon season, meaning that it, uh, hydropower is an option. In addition, the government is not hostile to outside organizations, and it uh, welcomes ideas about uh, renewable energy and supports climate. Uh, it supports the fight against climate change. Also, India is a rapidly growing country and it is massive, and so it could uh, change things in the world. There are several statistics for why India was an important country to consider. Firstly, it has a, it has a relatively low human development index at 0 0.624. This is this means that the infrastructure in India could uh, be rebuilt and improved upon. Also, its GDP, while not impressive for its size, is, is a substantial 2.074 trillion US dollars. Its population at 1.311 billion people uh, continues to rise at a steady pace, and uh, its area is 1.269 million uh, square miles. Also, the uh, carbon dioxide emission uh, is 1.59 metric tons per capita, meaning that for every person in India, India emits 1.59 metric tons of carbon dioxide. So this is a chart showing India's energy consumption by the different types of fuel. So as you can see, coal is the main source of energy. And coal is a fossil fuel, which means coal will eventually run out. So India is approaching a massive problem. Coal also isn't very beneficial for the environment to use as a source of energy. As you can see, recently the use of coal has been increasing, but also the use of renewables has started to increase since 2009. Our goal is to increase, is to further increase the amount of renewables that India uses. So the reason this problem is so urgent is that 300 million people lack electricity in India. That's 22.88 percent of their population. In addition, as you saw on the slide before. Coal is a major source of energy, also is bi burning biomass. Burning biomass causes lots of pollution, and coal is non-renewable. Actually, in 2011, 69% of India's energy came from coal. In addition, there, there have been frequent power shortages in India. This does damage to the economies and to industries and to education. Um, yeah, so this is um, some things that we can do. As Daniel had mentioned before, India has a very um, what is it, diverse geography, so it gives us op um, a lot of options when using renewable energy. Some ideas that we thought of were using open plains and turning them into wind turbine farms, using vortex turbines. They're more efficient than normal wind turbines and they take up less space. Solar power um, can be used year round since India is located on the equator, giving it ample sunlight. Hydropower can be used during monsoon seasons when river levels rise and floods occur. We can harness all that to generate electricity. And there are geothermal hotspots located near many populated centers in India, and we can create power plants there to um, what is it <clears throat> to produce electricity. So this is what we are going to use. We're going to use lightweight, strong, and cost-effective materials such as fiberglass and carbon fiber in order to build our power plants. We're using new and innovative designs like hybrid power plants, which consist of multiple renewable energy in order to maximize the energy output. So to maximize the amount of electricity produced, we decided to take these three designs and combine them into a multifunctional power plant. So even if it's not windy or it's cloudy, we can still har harvest the thermal energy from the earth. Because of the way the facility is built, it is able to adapt to the land around it. 
The bladeless wind turbines do not require a lot of space and neither do the solar panels. So we only need flat land for the geothermal plant. This map shows all the hot spots in India. How will we achieve this goal? Depending on the government's acceptance of our ideas, we will begin by educating the local inhabitants. The power plants will be built in deserts and we will support the construction and maintenance of dams and hydro plants. British infrastructure will be used to implement energy. Ideal geothermic spots will be harnessed into energy. Um, these are some locations where power plants can go. Here is Rajasthan, Gujarat, Gujarat, Punjab, Brahmaputra, Ganges River, Tuna, Lundra, and Jaipur. So, there are many positive impacts that come from our plan. To start, we will have more people with steady electricity, and this will lead to a boost in the economy. This is because, as of now, as I said earlier, power shortages cause factories to shut down periodically. Factories actually have days where they can't function because there are so many people trying to use electricity and there's not enough. So these power shortages cause decreased production rates, and that means there's damage to those industries and the economy. So when we create our power plant, we'll have steady electricity, and that will lead to less power shortages and steadier jobs and steadier production rates. So this blueprint shows a rough idea of what our facility will look like. The geothermal energy section will be the foundation of the building. This will produce 50 megawatts for only $25,000. Okay. So to put that in perspective, one megawatt can support about 1,000 average American households. Now, in average Indian households use 145th of that energy. So one megawatt can support over 45,000 Indian households. Okay. So about 70 solar panels will be on the top and around the facility, and 50 vortex wind turbines will surround the facility. The wind turbine design we're using is considerably cheaper in operation cost, manufacturing cost, and maintenance cost relative to more common windmills. The Vortex wind turbine that we are using costs only $20,000, $20, and by the end of 2018, there will be one that produces one megawatt of power. The solar panels that we are using are the basic designs that you, use, that you see everywhere. They are about $25,500 for installation and parts, and will produce 7.6 kilowatts per solar system, which is a group of solar panels. In total, one plant will cost $2,810,000. This power plant will produce 100.532 megawatts. On average, uh, on average, a household in India uses 900 kilowatts hours per year. So one of our power plants will cover about 244,627 households per year. In comparison, one regular windmill utility costs 1.3 to 2.2 million dollars, installation costs 3 to 4 million dollars, and it produces only 2 megawatts of power. Currently, India buys 300 million U.S. dollars worth of coal every coal and oil every single day. Yeah. So here are our image citations and our information citations. Thank you. So, did you design this yourself? Well, we took the um, different different things that we uh, mine at the geothermal plant. That's not our design, obviously. Right. And the wind turbines. The Vortex wind turbines are from a Spanish company that made them recently. So they're not on the market yet. But <laughs> I, I, they're planning it, so. So the combination of all these different entities into one facility was your idea? Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, I really liked how you showed the like, specific locations. Um, so you have the, the cost per facility here. Uh, can you just go over like how many facilities um, do you plan on making total? Well, um, when we initially um, go to India, we're going to build three facilities three. Okay. near um, the desert. And then over, um, over time, depending on how much they fund us, we're going to build at least four to five more facilities on the other locations shown. So the plan is to start with three and then basically to scale up yep. from there. Um, and then you also mentioned 
uh, how there are 300 million people that currently do not have electricity. Um, what's the reason for that? Do power lines not go to where they live? Um, well, they have power lines. It's just they don't have enough electricity. Like because the power lines are already in place, they just need more electricity to go through the power lines because there are too many people and there's too many too much need for electricity than they than they're producing right now. So it's a shortage. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. You notice that there's been an uptick in the in the renewable energy since 2009. Yeah. Right? Um, any idea why or what's being done currently? Well, I, I, would, I think that there's been a rise in hydro plants around because mm -hmm. of the funds. And the government is also taking strides against climate change and thus is uh, building. Yeah. In 2009, India started, um, the government started raising awareness and they started to um, encourage people to use more like efficient things and to help the environment. So that's probably why. Do you think putting this new kind of facility together is actually, like, did you talk to anybody else about it? Is it feasible? Like, is, is it, I'm just curious to know how much you pursue that. I mean, it sounds like an interesting idea, but can it be done? Like, well, in theory. <laughs> well, there are already the, um, other, like, companies, including sweet, other, um, countries including Sweden and Spain have already implemented these types of facilities. They don't use three different types of renewable energy, but they're building solar and wind farms together, creating a sort of hybrid power plant. So we're basically building on that idea, except instead of making two different power plants together, sorry, next to each other, we're building them together into one large power plant. So yeah, it could be feasible. It just depends on how well it works out. And we already know what uh, brands are gonna buy. The wind turbines are Vortex. And the solar panels, I'm pretty sure, are Canada solar. Okay, it wasn't clear to me if you're talking about the desert, so you can't have what kind of energy and in what kind of plant are you planning to use? We're building um, a geothermal power plant that also utilizes solar energy and wind energy. Okay, so not the you're not talking about the turbines and all. That. Over there, right? Oh no, the turbines are part of the wind energy, they're vortex turbines, so they require less wind but they produce more energy and they take up less space, which is why the we're wind turbines. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thanks guys. Thank you. Thanks for listening. Yeah. did a really good job. I thought the only thing that I thought, I, well, I thought what the interesting thing was how they said the biomass creates more pollution. <laughs> yeah. Whereas the last group said it just does it like in a different order, but it doesn't actually add more pollution. Even scientists them. disagree sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's interesting how two groups pick different things and they seem to conflict. Yeah. yeah. Other than that, I like their innovation. I thought they came up with a creative idea. Um, I think the only the negative on them is feasibility because it is an inno innovative solution, but I thought they seemed all well prepared and could explain it all and I, I like their, I think they, they, they actually created something interesting, like yeah. an interesting idea. It, it certainly is creative even if it is, uh, I don't know if you call it fantastic, um, kind of fantasy, but it's, it seems practical, and I like that they're throwing them in the desert where there's high winds, plenty of sun, so definitely two of the three implements will be effective, which is a good thought. And then another thing I wonder if they're not creating enough electricity to get to the homes, I hope that these power plants create enough, uh, uh, enough electricity to get the electricity out of the desert into the cities, however far away it might be going. Yeah, I really really liked how they took ideas that were already out there in pieces mm -hmm. and brought them together for a new solution. Yeah. Like you said, you know, very innovative. And they, they have a cost. I mean, who knows how accurate it is? Yeah. But they did their work. Yeah. Right. And they, and they, they are, we already know, they, I like how they're enthusiastic. We already know who we're going to pick. We're going to yeah. pick this company for this solar panel, this company for yeah. that win. So and I, would, I would give them the clear win here yeah. today. And yeah, I think I'm nice. completely agree. Yeah. yeah. It, they were just 
I mean, I felt that their presentation was also persuasive. Oh, you yeah. know, like how they communicated what their ideas were, and I feel like they communicated it in a persuasive way. So, you know, when they started talking, I was like, oh, tell me more. You know, like I was really interested in what they had to say. And then, and then they backed it up. We created this new yeah. thing. Like, the, that part wasn't clear, that yeah. it was their idea. I think yeah. they should have just mentioned that in their presentation. But. Well, that too, and they created a, a very nice visual, yeah. and all the members of the group contributed equally. Yes, and they had the forethought to bring a pointer, a clicker. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> as a tech person, I was so appreciative of that. <laughs> so, 3.5? Yeah. I want to give them a 3.5, and then I yeah. give them the win. So that's a group. All right. Yeah. Group five. Yeah, it worked out. Yeah. <laughs> I also appreciated that their innovation actually addressed an issue that was unique to that country. Like they've yeah. got all these blackouts, they've got all these different situations that cause blackouts, let's create fail safes and yeah. that was And their innovation tapped into the geography. You know, it's like we're gonna use hydro because there's monsoon season and we're gonna there's geothermal hotspots. Here's the map of where they are and yeah. we're gonna tap into this because of that. Um, so I just thought mm -hmm. that they really, you know, identified that like specific region, specific problem, specific solution for that region. Mm -hmm. yes. Who's going to deliver the final outcome to uh, I can do it. I can do it. Yeah, I have to go back to you. Right, so.